guitar and excel open chords c major scale b diminished seven chord worksheet get ready and don't fret remember the board's totally fretted already so you have to be the calm one in the relationship here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we basically built this from a blank worksheet, but we did so in a prior section. So if you want to build this from a blank worksheet, you may want to begin back there. However, you don't necessarily need access to this workbook if looking at this from a music theory standpoint because we'll simply use it as a tool to map out the fretboard, give us the notes, the scale, the chords that we're focused in on. If you do have access to this workbook, though, there's currently like eight tabs down below. We've got like seven of these green example tabs and one OG orange tab in OG orange. The OG orange tab representing the original worksheet we put together in a prior section it now acting as the starting point going forward, mapping out the entire fretboard, giving us our entire musical alphabet, both in letters, numbers, and combining them together, providing a key that can be changed with the green note, adjusting then the scale that we're focused in on on our worksheets in the right, which will provide us the notes in the scale and the chord constructions from the notes in that scale, we then wanted to focus on the C major scale and break out the chord constructions in open position, starting, of course, with the one chord, that being the C major chord. So if we go to this first tab, that's what we did. Open positions on the fretboard, zero through three, mapping out the one, three, five of the chord, mapping out the fingering, discussing it in detail. The, we then went to the four chord or the F major chord, skipping the two and the three. Why? Because we want to look first at the major chord constructions representing with the capital Roman, no Roman numerals, numerals, <laughs> one, four, five. And then we went to the five chord, the G chord, and we mapped it out for the same or similar rationale and reasoning. We then went back to the minors, which isn't like going back to something that's worse. It's, this is not baseball. This is the minor chords, just as good as the major chords, but we went back to the two chord, which is the minor chord. I might have adjusted some of these names down here on these tabs uh, as we go, uh, but we're, this is constructed off the two note of the C major scale. This is the D minor chord. We constructed it over here, discussed it in detail. We then went to the three chord, which is going to be constructed off the E. It's going to be the E minor, and we mapped it out, discussed it in detail. We then went to the six chord, and we skipped the four and the five because we already talked about those, the sixth chord being the other minor chord construction, and we discussed it in detail. So now we're going to go to the seven chord, which is that weird one. It's the strange one because when you build a uh, chord off of it, you don't get a major, you don't get a minor. We get what they call the diminished chords. And we can, we can think about that a few different ways. We'll kind of dive into it uh, a little bit later, but one way to think about it is with the intervals looking at the intervals and we said before that the major distinguishing factor on the intervals is the third so the major and minors have a different third that's what makes them major or minor one way that you can define the major versus the minor uh, but then we have this weird one down here which also has a strange activity happening happening on the fifth so you can kind of think of it as from an interval standpoint similar to the minor i think that's why it might be a lowercase uh, roman numeral still but then we put a dot next to it because it also has something funny going on with the fifth meaning we flat the fifth so we'll talk more about that later a lot of people will will kind of ignore the diminished chord because they're going to focus on the heart the meat of of uh the chords and the scale and that's going to be the majors and minors chords constructed off the notes one through six but the seven chord is actually interesting quite an interesting chord and has its uses so we do want to uh, take a look at it as well and then if we look at the mode related to that that would be the the locrian mode and that would again be a kind of a strange mode meaning you wouldn't normally you know try to make that uh chord the center chord that you're playing and if you did you'd be trying to do a locrian uh type of mode but that doesn't mean, even though you don't usually play in Loki, and that doesn't mean the seven chord is not useful because it has its uses as you're working around in, say, playing in the key of C, for example, because it kind of leads back to the one. So we'll talk more about that uh, later, but I just want to point out that 
I think it is quite useful to learn uh, a little bit about the seven chord. It's an easy chord to play. It's not that difficult. So uh, it's worth taking a look at. So I, don't, I wouldn't just ignore it. <laughs> so in any case, I, I have ignored it in the past in my own uh, thinking of it. And I don't think that was a good idea. So I'm saying that's why I'm saying I don't think we should ignore it at this time. So I'm going to copy over the OG tab. Let me do that again in case we didn't see that. We're going to put put uh, our cursor here, left, uh, hold down the control, left click on the OG and drag it to the right. And then uh, I will double click on it. I'm going to say this is the practice and this is going to be B diminished. I'll call it seven chord. Hopefully I got that right this time because I think I mislabeled some tabs in the past. And if I have and I confuse people, I apologize for that. So then we're going to go up top and say, okay, so we're still going to be constructing off the key of C. So I want to make sure that my worksheet up here is in the key of uh, C, which is a four. And then I'm going to copy the worksheet down. Now this will be the Excel intensive uh, part of the project. If you don't, if you're not a big Excel fan, uh, you could possibly skip it, but I still think it's good to look through it even just from a music theory standpoint, because when we start to build things and actually map things out on the fretboard, you'll see us actually mapping it out uh, each of the cells as we color them instead of the end product, which I think is, is easier to see uh, sometimes. So even if you're not into the Excel thing, it might be worthwhile to stick around, but it's up to you. Do whatever you wanna do, man. I, I'm not telling you how to, how to do stuff, or I kinda am, but this is just a suggestion on how I would do it. You don't have to do it that way if you don't want to, okay? That's it's just it's just a suggestion. So I'm going to then pull this down and I'm going to then uh, select all of this stuff and copy it down. So I'm going to go from here down to the bottom of this blue one over here, control C, and I'm going to paste it down because I want to repeat the same construction we had up top as opposed to what we did in the OG tab, which was to have the modes with the same note underneath. So I'm gonna paste this down here so we can have the fretboards on top of each other and then sort through them. So I'm just pasting on the red zero all the way down, control V, control V, control V, and there we have our fretboards. Now I'm gonna hide the ones that have the just the numbers, even though look how clean that is, just like the Sudoku board, just like the Ahsoka board. Wait, Ahsoka. Ahsoka is the Jedi. Sudoku. Sudoku. They sound that they don't sound the same. They're totally different. They're total Sudoka Sudoku. Okay. So, anyways, most people aren't into that, so I'm gonna hide that. But if you can see it in just numbers, look how much cleaner it is than than the letters, especially when you put the sharps and flats in there. Uh so it I'm not saying the letters are not good or whatever. I'm just saying uh that's if you can visualize it that way, it might be useful. Uh, just saying, just saying. And then I'm gonna hide. I'm gonna hide all the ah Ahsoka uh, boards because we're gonna hide all those. No one wants to see Ahsoka. I would. We would. We would have been into it, but that last, the last TV show about Ahsoka was not that impressive. So now nobody's into it anymore. No one wants to see the Ahsoka board. So whatever. Hide. And then the cartoon was was pretty good. But then they ruined it. Or at least part of it. I don't know. The Clone Wars had some cool stuff. But then it went on forever. I didn't see the whole... What are you... I'm off on a tangent. So we're going to hide all these down here. Hide. Hide. And then I'm going to hide from the fret four. Let's go from fret four all the way to our worksheet on the right, as we normally do. Right click and hide all that stuff. And then I liked how last time that we had the related mode to the right, which was the minor mode before. I kind of wish I did that the whole time. So I'm going to start doing that now. I'm going to hide the AT, right click, and hide that. And then I'm going to hide from this uh, B, whatever it is, BB, and then go down to, I get to the Locrian, which is the last one, the funny one, the strange one. 
Locrian. It's that weird one. Right click and hide. So again, we don't normally play. You probably wouldn't think about it in Locrian mode uh, often, unless you're doing something a little bit strange. We'll talk about it a little bit, but you can try it out, certainly. Why, w why wouldn't you? Uh, but we'll get into that later. I'm going to see if I can make this as large as I can while still getting this Locrian totally in the picture. This needs to be in the picture. Okay, so so now all this is doing, so now we're going to focus on the seven chord, which is the funny diminished one. And that would be the one chord if we're playing in the Locrian mode. So that would be the one chord up here. That's kind of hard to do because like you kind of gravitate towards either playing in the major or uh, the minor, the relative six and some maybe the, the, the Dorian is not too hard to make the center, but making the making the seven the center, a little bit more challenging, which, but we're up, the challenges, challenges are what we do around here. We meet them. We meet the challenges. Anyways, home tab, let's, let's map the one, three, five out and say, okay, this is going to be a B and this is going to be green. And then conditional formatting this is going to be d that's going to be red and then conditional formatting let's make this one the f and that's going to be the yellow so there's our standard process and then i'm going to make both of these uh yellow to indicate these are the difference of the intervals so both of these intervals are different than the one chord so it's kind of like a minor and then it's three notes away and then it's not seven notes away like most fifths, but it's six notes away. And we'll talk more about that later, but we'll just map that out here. Now you could finger this a couple different ways. I usually just kind of visualize it this way uh, where there's my root and there's my uh, there's my fifth. And, and if you do it this way, you're not really mapping out like an open uh, position because you can play this anywhere anywhere on the fretboard because you're basically going to mute this string, play this string and this string and, and then this string. Uh, but that's a really nice, easy, movable position. So anywhere you find, you know, if you're trying to play a seven or diminished, if you find the root on the A string, then you can play this chord any anywhere. And so that's why I kind of, it's an easy thing to see. It's also kind of easy to see because note that uh, this relationship is what you're kind of looking for to get that, to get that sound, because that's then going to be that flatted, that's going to be that flatted uh, uh, fifth, right? So it's going to go from seven notes out to six notes out. And that's what you're kind of looking for. So when you see that relationship, nor notice that normally uh, you have a, you have, a relationship that looks like that, right? If I take this A, then the next string would be down here would be uh, the E. See, if I look at this A and the E, that would be the relationship between the one and the five. That's a power chord type of relationship. So that's normal in both the sharps and the flats. When we say that we flat it, if I was going to flat it, that means I'm pushing this out. So remember, like this terminology, just a quick thing on this terminology, when you do the sharps and flats, I might use sharps and flats to say that a note is a sharp or a flat. And the, the reason I do that is basically so that like I wouldn't have two notes that both have a D in the construction, for example. So if I, if I had a D and I had a D flat, uh, then I would probably call it a C sharp instead of a D flat so that you don't have two Ds next to each other. That's one. But then when you say it, when you use it as a verb, I am sharpening something or I'm flattening something, that's basically saying either you're going up or down. So if I'm sharpening something, I'm taking it up a half step. And if I'm flatting something, I'm taking it back a half step. So if I look at this diminished, I'm basically saying it's got a flat uh, five. Here's the five, which is seven notes away. I'm flattening it, meaning I'm taking it back down a half step. That's all it's saying. So anytime you, you see this interval between two strings, except between these two strings, because that's the weird interval, but any other two strings that has this one up here and this one down here, 
uh, you're, you're probably thinking, okay, that's going to have that kind of strange interval that kind of give you that dissonancy kind of diminished type of uh, sound. Okay, we'll talk more about that later though. Then let's map it. Oh, let's let's put it uh, let's put it down here too. We'll say this is going to be here. This is going to be that's the D, and then this is going to be the F. All right. So then I'm going to bring it on down. Let's do it again. Ultra vase another time. Once again, por favor, please. Okay. No one wants to hear you try to speak Spanish. I need to practice. I get no practicing time. Okay. This is going to be, let's make this whole one. Uh, the, let's map it out this way first. This is going to be our pentatonic scale. So I'm mapping the pentatonic scale now in C major, not in, I'm not mapping it out to the related Locrian, you know, scale there uh, that which might be a weird jazzy type of scale. But remember the pentatonic scale, normal people think about it in terms of it's being it's being related to the major or the related minor. So we constructed this chord from the major scale having all seven notes. And now we're going down to only five notes. So there's going to be and that's again, this is a funny a funny chord because two of the notes actually don't fit in the five note pentatonic. So let's check it out. So if I look at this pentatonic scale and I'm going to map these all out as green first, that's what we've been doing. Map them out as green. Duh, duh. Uh, hold on. There's the C is green. The C is blue. What are you talking about? It's green sometimes. It depends on where you're at. It's like, it could be green. I'm pretty sure Homer and the and like the Iliad and the Odyssey said they don't even know what blue is. They called it green, I think. So whatever. And that's gonna be green. And then one more time. And this is going to be green. Okay. So then we'll map this on top of it. And we'll see that this is our familiar shape. We've mapped it out, what, six times already? Seven times? So now we're going to now we're gonna put this on top of it. Oh, what am I doing? This is not the one. This is on the seven. We're doing this one. My brain is not exact. I'm kind of out of it today for some reason. I don't know what's wrong with me. Bear with me. Bear with me. But don't worry, it's just a teddy bear that's with me. So don't be scared. So bear with me, but it's just a, it's not going to hurt you because it's just a teddy bear. Okay, so then we're going to say this will be uh, boom. And this is going to be a B. And we'll make that green. And so, and then this one is going to be uh, a D. And we'll make that uh that color <laughs> red and then this one's going to be an f and it's going to be yellow that's our normal thing that's what we norm now of course the b doesn't fit uh in our pentatonic scale because it's the seven which isn't in our pentatonic uh shape so that don't fit that don't fit man but we'll uh we'll put it so i'm just going to mark that out as outside of what's acceptable in this area and then the f also don't fit see we have two of them that don't fit man so if you were to play so when you're so if you were to be playing playing in a pentatonic scale and you go into this chord then you could say okay that's going to be the same pentatonic and you can kind of add in your mind those two notes that are not in the pentatonic shape but would be in the major shape of the c major so now let's map out the entire major and then put it on top it will be on the major scale because of course we constructed this thing from the major scale it's the major scale all right so we'll put this so let, we'll make them all blue this time 
home tab style major is going to be blue major blue is going to be a c is blue and then boom everybody's got the same everybody's going to be in the same outfit these times so that we know who's on the team if i'm kicking the soccer ball from one person to the other they're gonna i know who they are because they have the proper jersey on if they don't have the proper jersey on how can you play the game you don't know who's who i have to like recognize i have to like recognize them by like some other characteristic i mean just put the you have to have the colored jerseys or it's not fair this is not all right so then here we go i don't know how colorblind people play sports you know that'd be a pretty hefty detriment i would think but we're going to put this on top of it now these would fit in there now so we're going to say this is going to be uh this one is going to be green and then this one is going to be uh red and then this one is going to be yellow boom okay so those all fit within it right let's put our shape on top of it i'm going to put this shape on top let's copy that and put that here it's covering up my yellows let's put the yellow i'm going to try to put the yellow kind of like on the inside so that we have layers layers of meaning it's so deep the layers of meaning extend it's crazy okay this is like you think you understand but no you, you go for you just go for it just keeps going going down deeper and okay so there we have that and then uh we're gonna say this is gonna be green and then this is gonna be red and this is gonna be the yellow okay and then i'll copy this over here too this is the one over here i can just copy these three format paint that over here and i can do that over here too this should have been done over here what are you slacking get your head in the game get your head in the game okay had enough of this all right calm down i just forgot and then we can copy this one over here all right okay so then let's do that again down here uh this time we're gonna build we're gonna build the foundation we're gonna build the foundation on the major and then put the pentatonic on top of it and then the chord on top of that so we'll see the layers the layers of meaning will be it'll be incredible see once it's constructed it's hard to actually see the profundity of the layers of meaning let's make these green but as it's being constructed that's why it's important to watch these ones even if you don't like excel because this is the layers you have to see the layers as they're put in place in order to fully comprehend the profundity so we're going to start out with the same colors of blue as the foundation laying down the foundation of the major scale foundation all right and then boom the founding foundation f and then the 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 and then g the 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 blue the the and then a the 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 
blue, duh, duh, one more time, and blue, the B, blue, duh, duh, duh. Okay, so there's our foundation. Then I'm gonna put on top of it the pentatonic, which will fit perfectly in it, because we're just taking the, the five notes, penta, out of the seven. What, you didn't know penta meant five? You don't know, like, Greek or Latin or French or whatever that language is? You don't know what that language is? Whatever. Get, get in, wise up, man. We're gonna go, uh, we're gonna make them green. Home tab, style, and we'll make them green. It'll fit right inside here. And boom here so here's the c and the the c and then the the uh, d and the layers of meaning oh my goodness the eyes are opening the filthy layers of crust have been removed from my eyes as the meaning is shining down with profundity look at that okay the pentatonic fits inside of it perfectly and then we'll put these on there which will fit in the major scale but not perfectly in the pentatonic scale because we're building it off of the seven note scale and the seven chord is starting with a note that's not in the pentatonic scale but is in uh, but is in the major scale so let's do it let's do that so I'm going to go, uh, this is going to be the B, we'll make it green, and then this is going to be, the D is red, and then this is going to be the F, which is yellow. All right, so then we've got B, let's put that down here. The B, B, the B's being green, the B's being the bees being green. Okay, so there's the colors. Let's put these colors over here. Format paint that over here. And then uh, I can indicate that these notes are outside. Well, let's just copy this down. Copy the shape. We'll put throw that down, throwing it down, throw it down. Don't just put it down. You got to throw down. That's what I'm talking about throw it down with authority uh any case the b is going to be yellow i'm going to make it yellow to indicate that it's outside of the pentatonic scale that's what that yellow means in case you didn't know uh and so is the f outside of the pentatonic so you've got two of those notes outside the pentatonic which are actually in the chord we're constructed which of course is inside of the major scale because we constructed it from the major scale but two of the notes aren't aren't in the in the sub cool the in crowd of the uh pentatonic within there okay so does that look right i think that's right so now let's do one more here just to give we'll talk about maybe the functionality later of the why you might use this this chord uh uh in practice and one way you can use it of course is to lead into the one so let's look at the relationship between the seven and the one it's also kind of interesting to look at the relationship between uh the seven and the five because you'll note that you have this three and uh the the b and the d and the b and the d uh over here interesting relationship but we'll talk about that later possibly Right now, let's map out just these notes again. Home tab and make this uh, B, B, B green, B, B green. And then we're going to say this is going to be the red. And then this is going to be the yellow, the yellow. And OK, so then I can copy this back on over here. B, B, green, D, B, red, F, B, yellow. Oh, uh, okay. And then I'm going to copy this 
home tab format paint it over here and then I'll copy this oh what did I do undo undo oh oh okay it's frustrating when Excel doesn't respond properly all right and then I'm gonna copy life is so difficult I mean it's just crazy crying out loud okay so there we have that now now you might compare that to the one up top because it leads into the one kind of and how is that we could say well let's map out the one over here let's do it with just like boxes I'm gonna make this one green make it green and then I'm gonna make this green and then our C chord up top we usually play it like this there's our C and then there's our C you see that's not a C but it's part of the C chord C you see what I mean the C you see what I mean with the C okay so we have this one here uh, did I do that right something doesn't seem right this should be over here and that should be there I think that's right let me know if I messed up if I mess up I apologize it happens sometimes um, not very often of course but from time to time any case the point is that you get the that this relationship between the B going a half step up to the C is the leading tone right that half step the half step away going from here to here is a leading tone so that's why you kind of often might use it you, you're going okay I'm gonna play that before I go back home and it kind of gives you a pull to go home uh, there's other ways you can work in to use it as well but that's the most obvious kind of way that you can you could you could see that it would be a useful thing to use and just to look at that a little bit more like if you go to the the o the og over here and you look at the musical out the, the that we created here notice you have the c uh is two steps away uh to get to the d two steps to the to to the e uh uh and then one step to the f i'm looking at here two step to the g two step to the to the a two step to the b and then one step to get back home in other words this half step going from the seven note in the chord one half step up gives you that leading that leading feeling to get back home to one and so if i if i play that with chords then you have to play the seven chord in order for it to lead you back to uh the one chord and the seven chord if i construct it just from our normal pattern we just start at the b and we take every other note uh that we constructed from our c scale it happens to construct not a major or a minor but it constructs this diminished right so if you want to get that pulling feeling you've got to throw in that diminished before you go back home to the c and you get a kind of a different feel than you would right Oft oftentimes you play the one four five will give you a very if you go if you go from from the four to the one you get kind of a pulling feeling back home that works good the five to the one you get that same kind of thing uh but so that's common you go from the one to the four or go around to the one or the four or the five to pull you back home to the one but if you want to get a little bit different feel then you can you can throw in the seven here before you go back to the one and because that has that leading note here going from the half step from the b to the c then it pulls back to the one uh very nicely now you can also see uh that if we if we look at this five chord it's kind of interesting because sometimes people play if you add the seven over here on the five chord that's uh the dominant uh, you know uh seven chord the f five is the if you add the seven to it which has a different interval than if you add the seven to the other major chords and you can see it's got some similarities here to the seven the 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 seven chord <laughs> or the chord constructed off the seventh note right because now you've got that f that's being uh pulled in here 
So you, you could see some relationships is what I'm trying to say to the, to the five, which is traditionally what people often think of as a core that pulls back to the one very well. And people often add that seven to the five uh, to pull back to the one well. And if you look at the similarities between you know the five and the core built off the seven, you get kind of some similar feelings, similar kind of characteristics from it. So in any case, that's how you might kind of take a look at it and use it. We'll talk about this stuff in a little bit more detail now that we have our worksheet built in uh, future presentations.